All right, welcome everybody. Let's go through chapter 2.2. Um, so we're gonna be talking about histograms. What I'd like you to do is pause the video, take a second and copy the notes down here. We have the center of a histogram represents the value that shows us where the middle of the data is located, the distribution or the nature of the shape of the spread of the data over the range of values. Um, we'll talk, this will be a very important part for 2.3 about the distribution. And outliers talk about sample values that lie very far away from the vast majority of other sample values. So um, through the lesson, I'll go through these uh, definitions more through examples so you get a better feel for it. I'm pretty sure outliers, most of you have probably heard of, but this idea of distribution of a histogram will be really uh, important. And what is a histogram? I'm sure some of you have seen it, but the idea, it's a bar graph where it consists of bars of equal width drawn adjacent to each other. The horizontal scale measures the classes of quantitative data versus the vertical scale represents the frequencies. And we'll show an example of what this is, okay? So let's actually go through the actual uh, worksheet together over here. So what I did was, let me zoom in. What I did was I gave the definition of a histogram here again. And based on the previous example with the McDonald's drive through right, we had um, 11 uh, people, or 11 frequencies between 75 and 124. This we did in 2.2. The idea is how do we create a histogram based on these data values? And simply, it'll just look like, dum -da -da -dum, just like this. Look how nice and beautiful it is in all the colors, right? Uh, the idea of a histogram is, Basically, you just have the frequency values uh, on the vertical scale. On the horizontal scale, you have the classes, right? So here we just have the time and seconds. Notice that there's no break in between the data values, right? You see how everything is nice and tight together. And yeah, this is it. And we have a little um, description of what we're talking about. And notice what is nice about this histogram because if we look at, let me actually get I, this pitch. So remember back when we had the, what did we do with these data values? We made it look nice like this. And would you rather have your data represented to you like, like this here or like this, right? When you have your data represented like this, what information can we gather from this data, right? Before, Notice how we were able to state that each drive through was somewhat between one and five minutes. But now that we actually took the data values and made it into this nice bar graph, notice that most of the data values are skewed. Well, in this, what we're going to say is we're, they're skewed to the right, or the, the data values are, are over here. That idea of skewed to the right, I'll explain in a second, but. Um, notice how your data values are closer between 125 and 174. You couldn't interpret that before when the data values were just like this. So that's why making a histogram is nice because it just portrays the data values, okay? So let's go through that def. So we're done with 2-2. That was very quick, right? 2.2, done. Now the next part for 2.3, we're gonna talk about distributions or shapes of histograms. So notice that here, let me go through some of the definitions. What I'd like you to do is uh, please have this in your notes. So we're gonna be interpreting histograms. Uh, here, the first type of histogram that you could have is a bell-shaped curve. So you'll have some normal distribution, right? So notice that everything, it just looks like a nice normal shape, right? Here, another example of a histogram could be where we have a, some sort of uniform distribution. Another type of histogram, which we showed over here, this idea where when your data values are strong, like more to the left side, we say it's skewed right. And when the data values are more to the right side, we're gonna say skewed left. And the idea is you have to think, you have to think of a, like a tail. Notice how the tail of this graph is on the right side, like think of like a little dog with a tail, right? Like the, the tail of the graph is on the right side, so this is just the language in statistics. It's skewed right. And here notice how the tail is to the left, okay? So 
yeah, notice how for the previous example, this is some this is some skew right. Okay. And what does this imply? It's stating that between two to three minutes, people were getting their McDonald's orders, right? So the interesting part or the interesting question that I'm gonna pose for you guys, and you're gonna, I want you to pause the video and think about it, is can you think of real life examples where we have this distribution, okay? So let's first talk about a normal curve, right? Can you think of real world examples where if you were to take all the data values, right? If you were to take all the data values and you were to, to graph it, it has to have this type of distribution, okay? Now that, takes time. So I really want you to pause the video and think about it. Can you think of real examples where you take the data values of what you're going to get and when you graph it, it must have this type of curve. Okay. Um, let's say you want to see some examples or here, pretty common one is let's say height of people, right? Let's say you took every single person in the whole world, right? You're going to have uh, taller people, shorter people, notice how like shorter people, taller people or something. And then there are just people who are just on average or in the mean. And notice how height of human beings must have this normal distribution. Same idea like, uh, let's say your SAT score, right? So if you're in high school or when you were in high school, when you took SATs, you had some people do not so good. You had very, very few people who scored perfect or got very, very high results. And then you had most of the population where they scored somewhat in the middle. So this is some type, this must be some normal distribution. Okay. Another one I thought of was, let's say blood pressure of people, you know, some people have low blood pressure, high blood pressure, and there must be in the middle. Um, I'm sure you have your own examples. And what I'd like you to do is write them down and we'll talk about it in class. For uniform distribution, can you think of an ex a real life example for this one? This one is not easy. This one we will come back to when we do a uh, probability. Okay, so we'll hold on for this one. Okay, but the next two are a little more interesting. Can you think of, same idea, pause the video. Can you think of real world examples where if you took all the data values, it must give you some skew right? that most of the data values are gonna to be towards your left, right? Pause the video and think about it. Um, so here, some ideas I thought of were household income. Notice that a majority of houses, if I were to take how much money everybody makes in the whole world, you're gonna have a lot of people who don't make a lot of money and they're going to be on the left side of the data value. So like, let's say if this is zero dollars, a thousand, two thousand, three thousand, right? You're going to have a lot of people in the world who make not as much money compared to the very few or quote unquote, the 1% who make millions or billions of dollars. And they're going to be on the right side of the data values. So this is an example. If you, if you're to take household income, you must get some sort of skewed right uh, distribution. Another example would be like a difficult exam. If you had a very difficult exam, many students would probably not do so well. So let's say if this is zero and very few people will get close to 100. Okay. All right. And I'm sure you have your own examples or other thoughts. Please hold on to them and we will talk about them in class together. Here, uh, last one, let me fix this a little bit. So again, same question. Can you think of real world examples? where you must have some skew left, where the data values will be stronger to the right side, okay? And let's say you came back to the video here, some ideas I thought of were death due to natural causes. Let's say, um, let's say this is zero, you know, if you have zero years old to 100 years old, the older you get, 
the more chance a human being has of dying due to, let's say, heart disease or natural causes, the older you get. Once you're younger, those chances are very, very low. So notice how that those data values must be towards you, right? Easy tests, that's another example. Let's say if you have an easy exam, more people are gonna get higher scores. And another one I thought of was uh, retirement, you know? Most people are gonna retire at an older age, let's say around 65, versus, you know, it's hard to say, oh, let me retire at 20 years old and ball out on a beach or something. You know, it doesn't happen as often unless, you know, you're very savvy. Um, yeah, and I'm sure you have your own examples, so just hold on to them and we'll go over them in class. But that is, is that it? Is this all of 2.3? Yeah. That's it, this is 2.3. I just wanted you to talk about, I just wanted us to talk about the um, the types of distribution. And yeah, that was for this part. We did, oh, this part over here. So we did this, this 2.3 on interpreting histograms, which was this. This part over here of a relative frequency histogram, this is very straightforward. But imagine, well, don't you remember we talked about a relative frequency, uh, where was it? If we go back to chapter two, if you go back to this, you could take a second. Don't you remember we talked about a relative frequency distribution where we converted, you know, the when we had 11, 24, 10, 3, 2, when we converted them to percents, a relative histogram, a relative frequency histogram, it just talks about the same idea, but you're just going to have percent. So 2%, 4%, 6%, and so on. Instead of having like a quantity of 11, 24, 10, 3, 2 on, on your vertical axis, you're just gonna have uh, percents. And that's it, we don't need to, I don't need to show too much of a nice example for it. But that is it for 2.2, 2.3. Very short chapter. Um, oh no, we have to do 2.4, we'll do that um, in another lesson. But what I'd like you to do is, um, for the last page, a quick little homework assignment just so you get a better feel of what we did in chapters 2.1 to 2.3. Um, my printer couldn't print this, but there's this example with the Old Faithful where it states, um, I mean, you have, you should have it printed, but it states, uh, listed below are certain duration times of eruptions for the Old Faithful Gazer in Yellowstone National Park. And these times construct, um, oh, whoops, sorry. What I'd like you to do for this example is, based on the data values that you have, create a frequency distribution, right? So, you know, um, organize the data values. So here, we'll, we could start with, um, what are we gonna start with? We're gonna start between, uh, we're gonna start at 125 seconds, and we're gonna have a class width of 25, right? So if this is 125, the next one has to be 150, and notice that if this is 125 and this is 150, then what value has to be here? This has to be 149. So all the data values between 125 and 149 create some sort of frequency distribution, right? And then also uh, create a histogram, okay? So create a histogram based on the data values. And what does the skew of the data imply? Is it skew, uh, skew left? Is it skew right? And um, this part B, we could um, hold on to that. We'll do that in a, another lesson because I didn't teach you this part yet. But okay, um, that's it for this part of 2.1 to 2.3. In 2.4, we'll talk about these types of data graphs, which I haven't talked about yet. And yeah, okay, I'll see you soon.